Hi everyone, welcome to the Getting Started with Terraform in AWS session, webinar, meetup, whatever you want to call it. Um, I can see some people over here, so let's just uh, see you guys. Can you just uh, ping in the chat? So I'll see that everything is working fine. Uh, it would also be great if you ping, if you chat and say if the microphone is working well, because in the last meetup the microphone didn't work so well. So can you hear me well? Um, so I'll start and I'm waiting for you to tell me if the microphone is working well, right? Um, okay, so first, uh, it's, as, as you know, it's a YouTube stream. So there is a delay between what you hear and the chat. So there is something like a 10 seconds delay. Um, so bear that in mind, you might write something in the chat and wonder why don't I, you know, why don't I hear you and stuff like that. So just be patient with that. Feel free to ask questions during the session. You know, it's a chat, you can't really interrupt. So feel free to just shoot what you want and I'll stop and read what you, what you have in mind. Uh, the recording will be available tomorrow. Uh, you should just use the, uh, thank you guys. Uh, you should just use the same link as you did for this YouTube stream. And a link for the presentation will be added to the description of this stream when the session is over. Okay, so in case you want this presentation, just go to the description and you'll find it uh, when the session is over. Okay, so let's start. Uh, who am I first? So you'll get to know me a bit. Uh, my name is Meir Gabay. I work at PodOps.io. I'm working over there for like uh, one year. And I worked at NICE uh, for four and a half years. Uh, both of my roles uh, in, at NICE, I did uh, a lot of automation. I was a training operations manager and I did a lot of automation as part of my role. And uh, at PodOps.io, I'm a DevOps engineer, if you can call it a profession, you know, it's more like an operations engineer. And uh, we'll get to what I'm doing over there in a second. You can contact me through here, okay? Um, moving on to PodOps. PodOps was established in uh, 2013, based in Tel Aviv. We, we work in Israel, London, uh, Miami, and we work all over the world, okay? So our guys are based here, not just guys, we also have a girl in, in the team, uh, even three girls in the team. And we are based over here, and we already did more than 100 projects. Uh, some of you may already know us as DevOps or DevOps Pro. Some of our clients, great, now that you saw. Okay, so the topics for today, but even before I start with the topics, um, as part of what PodOps is doing, infrastructure as code is just a tiny bit of what we're doing, okay? We can assist clients with creating infrastructure, um, okay, continuous integration and deployment, pipelines, monitoring, like we can do anything that relates to DevOps. And if you have any questions about it, you can also ask here in the chat and I'll answer if you have any questions about DevOps and what PodOps are doing. Okay, so the topics for today. Why to use infrastructure as code? I don't know if you read the description for this webinar, but I didn't write down why to use uh, infrastructure as code. I did write down how Terraform works and how to create infrastructure with Terraform. And it's gonna be a live demo. Hopefully it will go well. And I added this, you know, just so it makes sense that we actually, uh, you know, uh, why are we doing it? <laughs> okay, so why to use infrastructure as code? Instead of creating resources, infrastructure via the UI. So hold on, what do, what do I mean like via the UI? So instead of creating stuff from here, okay, the UI, the user interface, you write down as code. So I'll use something like visual, I'll clear the screen, like Visual Studio Code, for example. So I write down here the, the resources that you wish to deploy. So everything that I write in here in Visual Studio Code, I'll then use Terraform and ba-boom, it's gonna create resources in my AWS account, okay? It's gonna be like magic. Okay, so why, why do I need it? I just told you like what's infrastructure as code, why do I actually need it? So I use it to, for automating its infrastructure deployments. You can think about it as, you know, I'll even, um, no, I'll write down later. So automating infrastructure deployments, uh, keeping, keeping multiple environments aligned, uh, dev, staging, and prod, think about it. If you have, let's say two environments, okay? You got staging and production, and you did a lot of stuff in staging. So let's say this is my staging account, and I created uh, EC2 instances and security groups and volumes and, and tons of rules and elastic IPs and whatever. And now 
my manager or my customer, whatever tells me, listen, now I want you to do the same thing in production. Think about the big headache that you get when they, somebody tells you, okay, so copy paste what you just did to another account or maybe another region or whatever. So instead of doing that, you can just write down infrastructure as code, change a few variables, and then it's very, very easy to uh, keep your environments aligned. Okay, so that's a good thing why to use infrastructure as code. It's easier to track issues and relationships between resources. I think that's most of, like that's my opinion about it because I think it's easier to understand what's going on with my infrastructure if I read it as code, you know, in um, in Visual Studio Code instead of going through the UI and checking like, okay, I got this instance and then go here, I got this volume and then go here, I got this security group. So instead of going through everything in the UI, you just have it as code so it's more organized and it's more comfortable but again that's my opinion and also if you want i'm gonna share all of the links in this presentation in the chat so if i forget to share a link and you want to to get something like you want the link so just let me know and uh, and i'll copy paste because i might forget and if you really want to dig and understand what infrastructure is code uh, why to use it then you can go ahead and read this uh, information okay so that's the why great how Terraform works. Terraform, um, I told you to make some preparations for this webinar. So first, as you can see, I got this uh, AWS account, okay? Because I need to deploy. If I want to deploy something, I need somewhere to deploy it, okay? Resources, infrastructure. And you need to install Terraform. Terraform is basically a binary file, okay? If you go to the install, if somebody wants to do it right now, I'll just copy paste the link over here. If you want to install it right now, some of you might use uh, on Mac OS, you might use Brew. On Windows, you could use uh, Chocolate or maybe even download a binary file. I think you got here manual installation, blah, blah. So if you want, you can install it. And when I say binary file, I mean, if I write down Terraform over here and let's say, I don't know, version, okay? You can see I'm using this version. It recommends me to download a newer version, blah, blah, but it's a binary file. And eventually I'm gonna use this binary file to apply stuff, it's gonna give me an error. And I'm gonna use this binary file to destroy stuff. And again, it's gonna give me an error. Or, yeah, you don't destroy stuff, whatever, yeah. Let's cancel it and clear. Okay, so it's a binary file. Great, but what does, it fi what does this binary file use? So, you need to uh, define TF files, okay? TF short for Terraform. And usually in every repo, in every GitHub repository, you will see a main TF file. So this is why I wrote down main TF. You can name any, uh, the TF files with any name, okay? It's just like a general convention of having a main TF file in the repository, so we'll know from where to start, okay? You can also have vpc.tf, bastion.tf, and whatever. Okay, and the CLI will recognize all of the TF files that it is running from. So if this, this is my present working directory, okay, I'm here, and right now it's empty, okay? In case you're wondering how I'm working right now, I'm on Windows uh, because I'm using OBS and it's easier. So I'm on Windows and my shell is bash, okay? So if you, wanna, you want, you can download Windows git bash, which is great, and then use it as your default shell in Visual Studio Code just in case you're wondering like what, what you're seeing over here. Okay, so these are the files. Here we define the resources, uh, variables, functions, whatever, we'll get to that. We got the Terraform state. This is not a mistake, the dot over here, okay? Because this file is supposed to be hidden. Usually in every Git repository, you know, the dot files are hidden files. This is why this file is, uh, starts with a dot. And this is the backend what I mean by backend. So each time you create a resource in Terraform, somehow Terraform needs to remember what's in your uh, AWS account. You don't want Terraform to go through all of your AWS account, get all of the resources, and only then start to apply and change stuff, right? Because it's going to be crazy. It's going to take forever. So what does it do? Uh, it saves the current status of the resources in your AWS account. Okay, and I hope that the fact that you see me helps you understand what I'm doing with my hands because I like to talk with my hands. Okay, um, it saves everything in the TF state file. And then when you, the next time you run apply or destroy, 
what it does, it checks in front of your TF state file um, what's going on and then it applies it in the cloud. So some of you might also think now, wait, so what happens if I delete stuff manually? So let's just give a basic uh, example. I created resources with Terraform and then I deleted one of those resources manually. So you can, I think you can realize that it's gonna make some trouble because then the TF state file, okay, the, the backend, the TF state file is gonna be conflicted because the TF state file knows you got those resources and you deleted them manually. So what's going on? So when you create resources with Terraform, you don't want to also um, do it manually. You can, you got the import function and you can do it, but you don't want to do it, okay? If you manage something with Terraform, keep on going with that. And we got the Terraform TF vars and uh, you know, the TF vars file. Okay, we got TF Terraform dot TF vars and any you know any name that you want auto TF vars. These are the input variables. So instead of asking the user, if you want to ask the user like a username, password, uh, AWS uh, secret key, access key ID, whatever, and you don't want each time the user when I say user, I mean, okay, I'll, I'll differentiate it. Let's say developer, okay? Developer is the, okay, architect, okay? We are the architect. We do the infrastructure, all right? So you don't want each time an architect does um, Terraform apply, you don't want them to insert uh, credentials or stuff like that. You want them to remember it in somewhere on their computer. So you can notice over here, you got the Terraform TF vars. Usually you should also keep it with, um, you know, you should, you should also ignore TF var files in your GitHub repository or your, any repository that you have because you might have some, uh, you know, uh, important information over there that you don't want to put in the cloud or any other repository. So Terraform TF vars is helpful to save uh, variables and we'll get to that. We're going to use it, okay? We got variables with Terraform. Of course, it's it's sort of a, you know programming languages a, a programming language. Uh, the the language is called uh, HCL, which is HashiCorp configuration language, uh, because HashiCorp are the ones who created Terraform, so they developed this whole language. is uh, It's based on Go. Okay, so if you wonder how did they really program it or write it or whatever, the, the binary file is written in Go. And we got variables, we got local variables, the difference between them, okay? Variables are stuff or are input variables that the, you ask from the architect, okay? You can ask them to write it down. You can ask them via the tfvar files, but it's something that you get as an input from the architect. Local variables are the stuff that you do inside of your Terraform um, code. Okay, so let's say somebody in, uh, gave some input for, let's take S, S3 bucket name, okay? S3 bucket name uh, must have, uh, must be lowercase with hyphens, okay? It doesn't have, it doesn't have to have, uh, pah, I confused. You don't have to put hyphens, but you can put hyphens, okay? So we can take the expression of like, a, what's the pattern allowed for S3 bucket name? And then when the user, okay, let's say the user, uh, the architect inserts the bucket name, you can check it out if it matches, all right? And after it matches, you can then do some manipulations on this variable. Let's say trim, you know, uh, kill the, the spaces in the, in, at the beginning and the end and stuff like that, okay? So local variables are used for manipulation, not just for text, okay? You can also manipulate numbers, expressions, and stuff like that. Uh, we got also modules, and it's funny because in the tutorial of the, the official tutorial of Terraform, and they got excellent tutorials. Okay, they got excellent tutorials. You should definitely go and get started with, you know, with what's going on over here. Um, they teach modules in the end. Now it's funny because we are going to start with modules. Why? Because uh, not all of you are going to stay there, you know, for the whole uh, session. So I want you to really understand how powerful Terraform is. You can just take a module. You can think of it as a component. Think of it as somebody already created a VPC, a virtual private cloud component, you know, a module. And you can uh, just use this module in your code without writing everything all over again. So modules are just components that you can reuse. Okay, you can even write your own modules, which is great. 
you can use expression and functions and we'll get to that. I'll just put links, you know, to what are the expressions and functions that we have in Terraform. And like every programming language, it's not about knowing everything. It's about knowing what you need. Okay, so it's not like I know all of the expressions in Terraform and I don't know all of the functions, but I know the functions that I need. And if I don't know something, a quick Google and you find it easily. Uh, data sources, that's also a great thing. Uh, if you want to get information from your cloud provider uh, about stuff going on in your AWS account, okay? For example, if you want to check how many availability zones you have in the current region, it's not something that you want to, you know, hard code in your code or, in, or I don't know, stuff like that. It's something you can query, okay? How do you query that? With data sources. So what are data sources? Let's just paste it down. So ah, I already did. So data sources, let's say you want to get uh, a list of uh, AMI images that are available in, a in AWS. So you can use data source for that. Okay. So that's a good, a good example for uh, I'm using it to get stuff from the cloud, from my uh, AWS account. And then I can use it in my code, manipulate it, change it, or use it to do something else. Okay, great. Moving on, because now we're going to start the demo. Any questions so far? If you do, feel free to throw it in the chat. And the goal of the demo is to create a VPC, and we're going to create it using a, you know, a module. And I'm also going to show you the whole process of doing so. And when I say the process, I mean I'm going to search for the module. I want to show you how I'm doing it, okay? So you create a VPC, you create an EC2, and we're going to SSH to the EC2. Now, this EC2 is going to act as a bastion, okay? And I want to show you what do I mean by creating a VPC, which VPC I want to have, right? So the VPC that I want to have is, I want to have a private subnet. And in this private subnet, I want to have a web server and a database. It's not something that we're going to do today, but it's something that is coming already with the VPC, you know, the infrastructure, the module. So I want to have a private subnet. I want to have a public subnet. And in the public subnet, I want to have a NAT gateway. And I'll get to that in a second what it is in case you don't know. And I'll, and I'll also want to have a bastion. Why do I need a bastion? Oh, how I wrote it down. Why do I need a bastion? Because if I want, if I am the architect, whatever, and I want to SSH to one of my servers. I don't want anyone else to have access to my servers, okay? So this is a private subnet, this is a public subnet. Everything over here is in a VPC, and I want to SSH to my bastion, and for my bastion, I want to SSH to my web server or database. Okay, so that's a good practice. You don't want to SSH directly to your servers. You want to have some buffer, and also we're going to allow, we're going to put a, we're going to put a security group, you know, create a security group that allows to SSH to the bastion only from our IP. Okay, and we're going to do all of that, and by all of that I mean create the VPC, create the subnets, uh, create the bastion, and we're also going to SSH to the bastion, okay? Not gateway, just in case you don't know, if you want to provide, because this is a private subnet, so this subnet doesn't have access to the internet, but if you do want to provide access to the internet, you can um, enable the NAT gateway in the VPC module, and you will see it in a second. And then if you want your web server to have access to the internet, it goes through the NAT gateway, and then it has access to the internet. Okay, so access to for, with SSH to your resources from here. And if you want to have access uh, to your private resources from here, and it just so it makes sense, obviously you also want to put your app itself, okay, in public subnet, right? Because you want users, okay? So this was me, okay? This was me. Now this is your one of your users. You want your users to hit the application, and the application will have access to your database, web server, blah blah. I hope that made sense. Why, why are we doing it, this? Why am I using the VPC module? Okay. So first, first of all, before I do anything, I'm just going to follow the steps that I wrote down over here. It's very simple. We need to add a main TF file. Okay, so let's do that. We need to add a main TF file and add a provider and Terraform block to it. Okay, let's do that. 
So I'll just create a file, name it main.tf. And here I'm going to add, I'm going to add provider. By the way, I'm using Visual Studio Code and I got the Terraform extension installed. So everything here is auto-completed, which is great. You know, I don't need to remember a lot of stuff. So provider AWS. I'm focusing on AWS, but Terraform is provider agnostic. Okay, so you can use it almost with any famous uh, uh, cloud provider, but here we're going to focus on AWS. Okay, so provider. Next, I need to insert in the provider the region. Just for now, okay, just for now, I'm going to hard code the region. It's not something I'm going to do in real life. I'm going to put here EU West 1, and just for you and for me, it's Ireland. Okay, just so I remember, so I'll know that I'm going to deploy everything in my AWS account over here in Ireland, okay? Great. Next up, um, I told you to configure, as part of the preparation for this uh, webinar, I told you to configure um, your AWS profile so you can use it in Terraform. So if you configure your AWS profile in the AWS config, okay? And why do you need that? Because think about it, you're going to access your AWS account. You need some access to the account itself, right? From your machine. So how do you tell Terraform to use what you need? First of all, you can define the, the, the environment variables. Okay, so the first option that I would use in any case would be use the AWS access key ID and AWS secret access key use them as environment variables. Okay, that's the first option. This is what I'm gonna use now, okay? If you don't want to use this option, you can simply use profile equals and then maybe it's default. I'm not sure how your profile is named, but you can just put your AWS profile that you configured in the um, AWS config procedure, okay? I'm not gonna do that. For now, I'm going to leave it as it is. Why? Because I'm going to use environment variables, this and this. How am I, am I going to use it? I'm going to do it with AWS Vault. I'm not gonna get into AWS Vault. I'm assuming that you know how to define um, environment variables. So if you want, you can also define your um, variables from here. Okay, great. Another option that I would totally not recommend is putting it uh, like this, access key and then my key. And same goes to secret key and my secret, whatever. I wouldn't go this way. It's very not recommended. You should use your profile or environment variables. And as far as you can see here, it's like putting it, uh, uh, it's like doing this, okay? Because everything is commented. Great. So that's the provider. Next up, I want to define my Terraform block. The thing that I'm doing over here is something that I'll do for all of my Terraform repositories. So in case you're wondering what's this step, when am I doing it? Each time you create a new repository with, for Terraform, you should do this step or you need to do this step, okay? So Terraform, th this is the Terraform block. Here we define the required Terraform version. And also we declare the remote backend if needed. Wait, 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 stop, stop, stop. What is a remote backend? You talk about a backend. A backend. When I say backend, I remind you, a backend is for the Terraform state file, okay? This is where we store the information that we have on our AWS account for Terraform. And that happens automatically. We don't really do it ourselves. We also have an option to do it with remote state. So you don't want to, to store the file locally on your computer. You are able to store it remotely. We'll do it in the end of the session, okay? We're not gonna do it right now. Right now, I'm gonna do everything locally why? Because I want to do it fast, as fast as I can, you know, because if I'm going to do it remotely, it's going to access some remote resources, check it, blah, 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 and only then apply my commands. And I want everything over here to happen fast, so I'm not going to use remote state until the end of the session. But I'm, I do, I am going to configure the required version, too bad it's not showing me the autocomplete, and I'm going to do this. I don't know if you noticed, or if you remember, but my Terraform version is this. And if I want the architect that is going to use my code to use specifically, okay, specifically, I mean from version 
um, this and less than this I can use the tilde okay just in case you wonder where did this tilde come from this equals to this okay so far the only thing that was declared over here or the required version for running this whole uh, Terraform uh, files that we'll have over here so we we'll have more files and also the provider that I'm going to work with why do I need the provider I'm going to work with because it's going to install or download some plugins and uh, and something from the internet I'm going to show you once I do that okay once I do that hold on I'll go back to the presentation because I think I wrote it down add a provi add provider and Terraform block and then I need to do Terraform in it this sets up a local backend and installs plugins and modules if necessary okay so let's do that hopefully it won't take too long and I have an idea meanwhile that this happens because it might take even a minute or two meanwhile while this happens I'm going to talk about the TF state okay so imagine this I am architect number one okay my name is Mayer right I have a friend you know my colleague Omer which I hope is listening to me right now uh, and he's here um, my colleague Omer is also an architect great we work with the same customer okay and this is the github repository of the customer that we are working with okay great now here we write down our terraform infrastructure as code amazing this is the aws account of our customer try to think what happens if i have a tf state file over my laptop and omer has a TF state file over his laptop and for my computer I do apply right so I write down code blah 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 and then it applies to this okay to the AWS account meanwhile that I do apply you know and change resources create destroy whatever Omer has a different Terraform state file because he worked I don't know a week ago and now he's going back to work and then he does also Terraform apply this might cause trouble right so if you're a very 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 small startup and you got only one architect fine don't you don't need to have a remote uh, backend but if you have two people working on the same architecture you should definitely have a, a, a remote backend and I'm going to show you again in the end in the end of this webinar how we're going to set it up and how easy it is to set it up you know it's not like an, a big effort and also it, it, it costs like almost nothing okay it's like uh, you know two to three to three dollars a month depends on the usage but it's really ne negligible okay Terraform has uh, successfully initialized it already finished before yeah but uh, let's just continue I installed the uh, Terraform the AWS provider of Terraform great let's do Terraform apply just to see what happens I don't have any TF files okay so nothing happened why because I don't have any resources any anything you know that is related to Terraform but look what just happened it did create the terraform tf state file okay which is this and this file uh, should be a secret so even though it's not a git repository and i think i will make it as a git repository you should put in your git ignore you know you should put you don't want to have tf vars you don't want to have the terraform you don't want to have the tf state file over here and just one second okay just one sec okay great and you don't want to, to show any okay great and I am going to to keep the git ignore file okay great so tf state file should be a secret you don't want to share it in your github repository again it's, it's a bad practice you want to store it somewhere on a remote backend okay moving on add the vpc module okay so here it says create a vpc tf file okay so i'm just gonna do that vpc tf amazing and what's the vpc module so before i even click on this link i just want to show you if i want to create a resource with terraform what i'm thinking is i'm sure somebody already wrote a module okay so i'm just going to type down terraform aws vpc module and i'll probably find some cool and good resources over here I like to look at the GitHub, in the GitHub repositories, but you can also go to the official uh, Terraform registry 
it's like the it's like docker hub you know uh, or like github it's a repository for for uh, terraform modules this is the official repository okay but i don't know i just like to go to the github habit and here so, and that's the first time you're going to see uh, terraform code right and, and again this is the last part in the terraform tutorial and we're going to use it first over here and i hope it will be okay usage how do i use this let's see I, i'm just going to copy paste it and we're going to go through line by line what's going to happen okay and of course if i really want to see and understand what's going i'll read more but i'm going to save you this part okay so copy paste that's it for now at least well, hold on, copy paste. Now let's go over one by one. Source, source is actually the, the module itself, right? So this is where it's coming from. This is the name of the module. So each time you get a module, you need to define from where you get it. You can also get modules directly from, uh, from GitHub repositories or from the Terraform registry. This is getting it from the Terraform registry, so just Terraform module source, just so you understand what I'm talking, module sources, you can get it from a local path. So you can even reference to a fold, uh, to a module that you've created on your computer. You know, it doesn't have to be remote. From the Terraform registry, just like this. How do I know it's Terraform registry? Because this is how it looks like. It doesn't have any special uh, uh, decorators and whatever. You can get it from GitHub. You'll see from GitHub, you need to decorate it. Wait, where is it? See, so from GitHub, you need to decorate it, for example. And you also get from Bitbucket and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so you can get modules from anywhere, locally or remotely. Great. Name. Okay, what's the name of the VPC? Let's just keep it my VPC. Normally, I wouldn't do that. Normally, I would, you know, create a proper name. And that, but I just want to keep it simple for now. So I'll just keep it my VPC. Cider. The cider of the VPC. This is why I told uh, some in the prerequisites guys you need to know guys girls you need to know about uh, subnets ciders because this is going to be japanese if you don't know what it is okay so the cider of the vpc is this and availability zones now here you need to be careful okay because the availability zones right now i'm, I'm defining that i want the vpc to be across three availability zones i want it to have three private subnets three public subnets and here i'm going to put it to false and false just to be explicit you know i think the default is false i'm not sure i just want to be explicit i don't want to be implicit you know to remember which values are blah blah i want to know that this is going to be false for sure so i'm not going to create an ad gateway at least not now you can you know once you get this repository and i'll probably push it you can use it and put it to true and then use the ad gateway for now we're going to keep it super simple okay i'm only going to create three subnets and I also wrote it down over here. Three subnets, private subnets, three public subnets in three different availability zones. Great. How does it know? That's my next question. How does it know? When I say that, like w what knows? How does the module know that I want to have one subnet per availability zone? Or let's say two, like these subnets should be in here. These in here and these in here how does it know this is how they programmed it okay so if you read the docs you can just read that you need to play with a number of availability zones private subnets and public subnets and then it, it you know it divides them uh, properly okay across them now i told you you need to be careful about the availability zones because not all regions in aws ha have the same number of availability zones right so you should be careful when you define it right now i'm going to leave it hard coded for now but if you want to read more about it i also wrote a blog post about it how to create dynamic subnets in terraform and i think you should i don't know why the link is weird so i'll just send it like this oh it's still weird amazing okay so hopefully you can just copy paste it whatever and in here i explained how i'm using terraform to manually assign and uh, create the subnets using this specific uh, AWS VPC module. Okay, so in case you wanna do like, okay, what's next? What can I do next? You can go ahead and read this blog post and it will teach you how to use AWS functions and do some more stuff, okay? Great. 
up next after I you know just wrote down this module the only thing that I changed here is that I don't want to create NAT gateway and VPN gateway that's it now if I do terraform in it it's going to look I wrote down here installs modules and plugins so each time you do the terraform in it it installs modules and plugins and I added this source so it's going to you know download from this source to my to my computer where is it going to put it in the terraform you know in this folder it's going to put all of the plugins and stuff like that this folder was created automatically I don't know if you noticed okay terraform init initializing modules now it's downloading uh, the module by the way you can also while this is happening you can also see in the docs over here that maybe it's not such a good idea to use the source just like that maybe you want to pin it to a version okay so if you want to pin it to a version what you can do you can add here version equals to and then same trick 2.0 so it will match the you know 0 12 version let's just do again just to make sure everything is okay and if you are not sure if everything is okay you can run terraform in it as many times that you want it's not like it's uh, initializing the whole uh, repository again or stuff like that okay so I didn't create anything I only downloaded the module now I want to apply the module how do I do that terraform apply now it's important to see that I'm in the same folder, okay? I'm in the same folder of these files, okay? As I told you, ls, same folder. So it's going to go through all, all of these files, including, you know, the this and whatever, and then it's going to apply. So let's do it. Telephone apply, just so you understand, I am going to show you both screens, you know? I'm going to show you how it's going to la la la. Ah, no credentials. Remember I told you that I'm going to use environment variables, right? You see here no credential found for the AWS provider. So if I use the profile like I told you to do, this would work if I had it configured. But I have some, I told you I'm using AWS Vault Exec. I think I called it admin. Hold on. AWS Vault Exec Admin. Just one sec. Let me see how I called it. Yes, it is. One second. Admin, this is the multiple factor authentication. Okay, just in case you wonder what's going on. Yes, okay, this is me, right? Admin, yes, this is me. Okay, clear. Terraform, okay, so now I need to run the same command. Just in case you wonder, AWS Vaults uh, injects, injects the, vari the environment variables. AWS access key ID and secret access key to the Terraform apply process. This is why I don't have to define them. Why am I insisting on not defining it over here? Think about automations. In automations like in GitHub Actions, uh, code pipeline, drone, whatever, you don't really want to do AWS configure on the, you know, on the machine itself, on the runner. So what do you do? You provide environment variables, even if they are secrets or whatever. So. This is why I'm trying to imitate anything that will might happen in a future automation, okay? So Terraform apply. Now hopefully it will have the credentials. Ta -ta -ra -ra, let's see. Meanwhile, feel free to ask questions. Okay, no questions, okay. And just look what just happened. Plan, it wants to add 90 new resources, nothing to change, nothing to destroy. Do you really want to perform it? To perform it? Um, only if you type yes, and it's also case sensitive, it will actually do the thing, you know. So even if you, Terraform also has the option to do Terraform plan. But why do you need to do Terraform plan if you already have a confirmation part in Terraform apply? You know, so I don't, I don't use Terraform plan. I only use Terraform apply. And if I'm not good with ju what just happened, I'm just doing control C or typing no or anything like that. And then it stops. So let's see it wants to, what it wants to add. Okay, I'm going to go through the resources very fast. It wants to create an internet gateway, a public internet gate. Uh, sorry. Yeah. It wants to create an AWS internet gateway and then a route. You know, it also does the routing. And another route for the private. You know, this is for the public internet gateway and a route for the private, for the private subnet. And then 
round table, and again another round table, and round table for the public, some more round tables for each subnet, you know, you need to create them, instead of creating them manually in the UI, it's just gonna happen over here fast. A subnet, you know, a, public, a private subnet, so it's gonna be three and three, remember three private, three public, so zero, one, and two, that's it for the private, now for the public, three subnets, it's going to create an, an AWS VPC, and that's it. This is what, you know, that's it, yeah, 19. Okay, so I'm actually going to do it, and I'm going to show you, meanwhile that it's running, I'm going to show you in my AWS account how it looks like, you know. Okay, so I'm going to hit yes. And you can see here, first of all, you should look, okay, so now it's creating the VPC. Here? My VPC already created it. No, no, I didn't need to click on create VPC or I don't know. And it finished. Okay, it was so fast. I didn't even have had a chance to show you, but it just finished. And you can see here, I got the my VPC. You got the subnets. You can also tag your resources. So maybe in the end of the month, if you want to see the billing and you want to understand uh, what's going on, you can uh, check it per uh, environment or stage, depending on how you want to call it. And you can see here the names are beautiful, you know, it's like my VPC, private, and then the availability zone. You got the routing tables. So I can just see everything that was created. And I can also see that the NAT gateway wasn't created because just to remind you, I put here, false. Okay, great. So I created the VPC. What's next? Create an EC2 keeper in, in AWS console. Now, you can create, uh, can, okay, can, create a keeper with the AWS CLI, maybe even with Terraform, but why do you want to do that? Why would you want to do that? I want to create a keeper which is outside of Terraform, you know, to manage it on my own. So I need to go to, this is just, you know, I, I, I assume you already know what's in what's an SSH and why do I need this keeper? So I'm going to create a private keeper. Okay, so I can go to keepers and, and then create a keeper and, you know, PEM or PPK, do whatever you want. I already created one and I named it Terraform Meetup Win. You should name your, yours uh, Terraform Meetup because I'm on my Windows machine. Okay, so I'm using, uh, you'll see over here, I put my, see? I got this file over here. So this is why I named it differently. So you create a keeper. Once we have a keeper, we put it on our, on, on our machine, reminding you, you need to do chmod 400 on that keeper. Okay, just to, otherwise SSH won't work. Great. So we got a keeper, moving on. Create a security group and allow SSH from your IP. So that's the part we actually create the EC2 and the security group, okay? This, that's the part where it's, it gets interesting. So in case you wonder when this webinar is going to, uh, to finish, once I SSH to the bastion, that's it, okay? So you, you can already realize that I'm going there, okay? Hopefully it's gonna be very fast. Okay, so how am I going to create the bastion? So first of all, after doing some research and reading and whatever, I just found out that it's easier to, to write down the bastion on my own and also for this webinar, I'm going to show you how I create resources, you know, and not just with modules. Because what I just showed you right now, I used the module and I didn't need to know a single line of code in Terraform, right? I didn't have to know anything. I just used the module, did my stuff, something happened. Great. Now I will create a file which is named Bastion TF. And this file is going to have, wait, hold on, is going to have a security group and it's going to have uh, an AWS instance. And also, if you want, you can also add a, an AWS Elastic IP, but we are not going to do that because we want to focus on Terraform, not on AWS, right? Great. Okay, so how do I create an AWS uh, security group? So Terraform AWS security group. You can just, by the way, a better search would be searching like this. Usually how I search, I'm like AWS, like this, you know, this is how I usually search. And click, 
And here I can see the syntax for creating a security group. Okay, so let's just do, do it. Let's create a security group. I'll try to, let's see how we can do it. Okay, let's just read and then I'll pop it out of my head, you know, what needs to be done over here. Each resource that you create in Terraform or any resource that you create in Terraform uh, starts with the word resource. Makes sense. And then you need to define the type. Okay, this is the type of the resource. Great. And then you need to name it. Okay, why does this make sense? Because if we create three security groups, okay, for three different purposes, let's say this is my web server, this is my application, and this is my bastion, okay? So we got three different security groups for three different things, all right? So this will be bastion, and for my web server, it will be web server, and for my application, it will be application. Why am I using different names? Because when I want to access, let's say, the ID of the security group, I will need to provide the AWS security group, and then I will need to provide the name of the resource that I want to use as part of the security group and then the um, attribute that I want to get from this resource. Once we'll, we'll reference two resources, we'll understand why it's super important to, to have um, a good name over here. Okay, so let's just do it. Resource. Resource. AWS sec too bad it's not completing me security group and then let's call it SSH Bastion Sebastian all right the name of the security group will be SSH Bastion and just so it will be like my VPC okay J just to make it aligned right and then description um, allow SSH to Bastion this is the description for the security group itself right uh, VPC ID, whoa, 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 whoa. Am I going to, wait, 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 wait. wait. Am I going to go here and then go to the VPC and get the VPC ID? Hell no, right? Hell no, we are not here for that. I'm going to reference from the module that I've created, I want the output, you know, of the VPC ID. How do I get that? So first let's reference to the module itself. So how do you reference to modules? You do module dot VPC. I wish I had some autocompleted, you know, maybe, maybe there is a way, I don't know, it's not working for me. And then I need to define the attribute that I want to get. Obviously we want to get the ID of the VPC, but I have no idea how this was implemented here, right? Because somebody else wrote this code and I don't know the outputs, right? This should be an output. So what we're gonna do, we are going to go to the Terraform uh, VPC, AWS VPC uh, module uh, GitHub uh, repository. Have I sent it over here? I think I did. I didn't. I don't know, here? Yeah, now you have it. And I'm just gonna search for VPC ID and I need to search it under the outputs, right? It should be, I want to, to reference to outputs from the, model, from the module that I've created. Okay, so the ID of the VPC sounds dodgy. The ID of the VPC, okay. So this, sound, this is weird for me, default VPC ID. It has the same, as you can see here, if ID of the VPC and hold on. It's the same anyway, so same attribute for the same value. So anyways, I'm gonna use this one because it makes more sense instead of the default, right? So I'm just gonna write down VPC ID, okay? Amazing. That's the first part because this security group is going to be part of a VPC. Okay, ingress. Now I'm going to, to define the ingress rule. Now if you wonder how I remember it, either you can, you know, copy paste from here and then just change it or you can just remember it, you know, depends on what, what you want, but I'm just gonna show you what I'm doing. So description equals to SSH from my IP address. This is for the ingress rule. Right now I'm creating one rule over here. You can create multiple rules. We are not going to get into that in here. If you want, you can uh, create 
AWS Security Group Rule and then reference it to a security group, blah, blah. I'm just going to focus on the simple stuff over here. So from port, from port, I want to allow only uh, SSH, right? And the protocol should be TCP. I think that's also the, def uh, the default protocol. Decider blocks, just, just to keep it simple, at least for now, I'm going to curl if config.me slash IP. I don't know if you know this website. This is actually my external IP address. Okay. And remember, it's a cider block. So I need to tell it you are constrained only to this IP. So I need to provide it with slash 32. Okay. That's the ingress rule. And I'll add an egress rule, you know, outbound rule. So from port, I want to allow my public, you know, because this is going to be, um, I want to allow the bastion to connect anywhere in the world, right? So I'm going to allow outbound connection to anywhere. Okay. Protocol equals to minus one, which is the same as any. Okay. Just if you wonder. Cider block. Uh, this should be a list. Cider blocks. Sorry. This should be a list. And I'm assuming you know a bit of pro programming, you know, so it makes sense that this is a list, you know, with the uh, squared brackets. And here I just need to type down that I want it to have access to anywhere in the world. Okay, so this is a list with one item. You can have multiple items, but why do we need more if we allow access to anything? This is the security group for now. Let's just add tags to the security groups. Sorry, tags equals two. And let's add environment. I think we, we, we had it over here. Yeah, let's just copy paste it. And if you wonder if there is an easier way to tag all of your resources, yes, there is. I'm just going to show you how, you know, the, the quick and dirty way to do stuff. And after that, we can talk about best practices if we have more time because we already hit the 52 minutes. Okay, great. So before I continue, I, I want to create it like in small chunks. So let's just create this security group and only then I will create the EC2 instance. All right. This is the security group. After that, I will create the instance. So let's just do clear and Terraform apply. If you wonder why I don't need to do Terraform in it, because I didn't add any module, you know, any plugin, any module, anything. I just added a new resource that I want to add. All right. So Terraform apply. Incorrect type, cider blocks. Ah, okay. This should be, <laughs> this should be a list. Funny me. A list of strings, right? Does it? Yeah. List of string is required. It's great because you know what are your mistakes. Apply. So you can also check for syntax errors, you know, with Terraform apply, you can just try it. Doesn't work. Fix it. No valid credentials. Sorry. That's my bad. By the way, while this is happening, you can see this file was created and then it's going to get deleted. Why is it happening? This is the lock file. Okay. This file is locking the Terraform TF state file. And only when I'm finished doing stuff over here, this file will be deleted. So I'm releasing the TF state file. Okay. So in case you wonder what is this TF state lock file, this is being created when you apply stuff. So it's going to create a security group. Okay. It's only one resource. I'm going to say yes. And then I'm going to the console to show you what just happened. Edible security group SSH. Amazing. Completed. Going here. Security group. Where is it? My VPC. Okay. Amazing. And yeah, that's it. Nothing else to show. Tags. If you want to see the tags that we've just added, the outbound rule, we allow anything. Inbound rule. Remember the... We had a description, so we had a description for the security group itself, right? Where well, that I don't see over. Ah, yeah, I see over here. Allow SSH to Bastion, and this is like for my IP address, for Mayor's IP address, whatever. Okay, great. So I got the security group. The last part that I need is to actually create the EC2. Once I'm doing that, I'm done. Well, and then uh, if you want to stay to learn about variables, and then it will be good because we are going to use variables, and we are even going to use variables right now okay so instead 
of uh, hard coding everything over here, which is ridiculous, okay? I'm just gonna use variables, uh, variables. I will add a file which is named variables. This is like any other file, right? And let's say I'm going to add a variable which is named, uh, it will be, it got crazy over here. It will be var my IP address, okay? And hold on, you'll see in a second what I'm doing. In a second, one second. Here I am referencing to a variable, okay? How do I know that I'm referencing to a variable? And also it's important, it's important to an input variable because I'm using the var word. That's a, a saved keyword, that's just like the module, okay? So var dot my IP address, now I need to define a variable. If you wonder um, like why am I creating a variables file, why don't you just do it over here? Why can't you just declare the variable over here? I can, but it's easier and it's best practice to have a variables files, a, vari a variables file which contains all of your va input variables, okay? So here I will define a variable. How do, you how do you declare a variable? Variable, variable and then the variable name. So it was my IP address, right? And we need to put it in, yeah, in quotes. And we can even uh, constrain the type, you know, this must be a string, right? And we can, maybe there is also a type of uh, constraining it to a pattern of an IP address, blah, blah, not gonna do it. Uh, description. Insert your public IP address and the default is nothing or yeah, whatever. Yeah, let's, let's do nothing. Hopefully nothing will break over here. And you know what? Let's just not insert the default. Just assume it's nothing. So now if I do Terraform apply, wow, how great it is. Look, a CLI. Right, I did Terraform apply and it tells me, please insert your uh, uh, public IP address. So hold on, I don't remember my address, but I have it over here. Well, it's not even, mm -mm, it's not even uh, an address, it's a CIDR, right? All right, so here I will create another variable in locals. Let's just talk about what's going on. I'm not gonna tell the user, please insert your IP address plus the CIDR, you know, plus the slash 32. I'm not gonna do that. I only want the IP address. I'm not going to, going to abuse the, the architect that is going to deploy this stuff, right? So what I'm going to do, this is the user's IP address, right? And in locals, I'm going to manipulate it so it will contain um, the CIDR of slash 32. Okay, so let's do that. So I'll, I'll declare, this is how you create local variable. Now that's very weird because you can, like you put here locals and then you can access those, those locals from anywhere in the code. And you can also put locals over here. It's a bit weird, we'll get to that, okay? So don't be like, why, why variables are declared like this? And why when you want to declare a local variable, you do this. This is how it goes. And here I will do my IP, Cider, okay, makes sense. Equals to, now I need to reference to the input variable, so it's gonna be var my IP address, and I want to concatenate it, right? I want to concatenate with slash 32. It reminds me of bash, because here you can use the dollar sign and then wrap it with curly braces, and if you want to concatenate, this is like, Okay, it reminds me of, I don't know, the Python and uh, uh, Python and F-string, Node.js using the, I don't even know what's the name of this sign, or bash, all right? So now each time I'm going to reference to the local variable, my IP cider, is going to concatenate the input variable, my IP address, to slash 32, like this. Amazing. But now I need to change that in the bastion. Okay, so going back to the bastion, instead of using var dot blah blah, I'm going to use local dot and then my IP cider. Okay, that's the whole process for now. You know, cider blocks, change it, and whatever. That's just 
one one example of showing you how to work with variables all right now that we got this figured out let's add more va let's add the bastion itself right let's add the bastion itself which is resource aws instance let's call it bastion how do i know to create terraform aws instance I just googled it and you can see it from here you can read about it over here I'm going to ignore this I just want to show you an example like no big example yes big example okay maybe this one okay when you create a resource like EC2 you can define you can define the AMI you know that is going to be to use the the Amazon image you can define the instant type, network interface. You can also define the volume that you're going to use, blah, blah. So let's start defining everything, okay? So the AMI, we are going to have a variable, okay? Later on, I'm going to move to variables and I'm going to define it over there. We are going to have a variable which is named EC2 AMI ID. We will declare it over here after we finish, you know, mapping all of the attributes of the EC2. Great. Instance type again it's gonna be var dot ec2 instance type if i really want to be you know co co politically correct okay bastion instance type it even makes more sense key name all right key name is gonna be the bastion key pair name remember we created the key pair name this was the terraform meetup remember we created so it's gonna be here right great subnet id where do you want to create this uh, uh, aws uh, instance J just to be clear i'm getting everything from here and if you want to to want you know you can read through everything but i just want to go through the stuff that i need to bring up a bastion right subnet id so I need to put this bastion in one of the public subnets. Remember, we have three public subnets. How do I reference to them? All right, so it's part of the module. Which module? The VPC module. All right. And now I need to, to look in the VPC module, look at the outputs of the VPC module, just like I did for the VPC ID, right? I'm going to do it for the public uh, uh, subnets. And then I'm going to get, for example, the first subnet from there okay so i'm just going to use index zero because it's going to be a list of subnets so if i go back to the uh, module the vpc module and i search for public subnets hopefully it will yeah, public subnet wait let's see i'm in the outputs na, 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 na. okay let's I think it's the end, I'm just, yeah. I'm in the outputs, okay, I'm at the outputs, great. So at the outputs, you can see we got public subnets and the output is a list of IDs of public subnets, which is great, because now I can do public subnets, just, you know, copy paste from here. Public subnets, I want to get the first subnet, you can also get the second or the third subnet, right? And then from the public subnet, I want to get the ID of the subnet, okay? How did I know that, um, sorry, 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 this is already, this is already the ID, okay? I don't want to mix it up. Subnet ID, this, this list already has a list of subnet IDs. Great. Moving on. VPC security group IDs is going to be, this is a list. Okay, this is a, va a variable which, you know, this, this is a list and I can get this, you know, this is a security group, right? So we already created a security group. So I'm going to reference to this security group. Here, I called it SSH Bastion, you know, that's the name over here. And from the security group, I need to reference this ID. How did I know that a security group has an output of ID? Let's just look in the docs, you know, resource AWS security groups. 
let's look what you can reference once you create it. Attribute reference, see? The ID of the security group. Great. Okay, so now I know how it works, blah, blah. Okay, and it needs to be a list. Okay, the VPC uh, group's uh, ID, IDs should be a list. List of strings, of IDs. And I want to associate public IP address, which is true, a Boolean value. I do want to do that. And I want to do the root block device. And you need to define the volume type. And let's say it's going to be var bastion volume type. And you need to define the volume size. So it's going to be var bastion volume size, right? Just like you do, I don't know if you understand, but this is what I'm doing now is just like doing, you know, uh, going to EC2, doing launch instance. Okay, running instances, launch instance, and start creating the instance. Okay, so now I'm defining everything, but think about it. Now, anytime I want to change stuff, I just do it in the code and then apply, so it's easier. And if I want to apply it on staging, on pod, on dev, on whatever, easier. Okay, great. So root block, and I know it, it, it sounds like there's more, but there isn't. Okay, so in case you wanted like to, to, to you want it to stop, so I copied the tags. Okay, same here, tags. And this is going to create the instance. Now I'm going to get an error. Okay, why am I going to get an error? Because I used variables that I didn't declare. Okay, so let's just see the error. Let's. There are form apply hold on what's going on this requires you <sighs> what does it want ah sorry see 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 look 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 what happened look what happened i tried okay it's good it's good i tried you know you need to read the error message he told me look it's it's locked and i was like wait but i'm working locally how come it's locked? Only, only I'm working on it, but wait, I got it running on another terminal. So this is why I got the error message, okay? So I'm going to stop this. This will delete the lock file, and then I'm going to apply again, and I'm just gonna get tons of errors, I think, right? So my IP, mm -mm -mm. just go back here, curl if config, and get my IP and, and I'm still gonna get yeah so now I'm gonna see all of the missing you know the undeclared variables that I need to to fill in so let's you know let's just get them so it's gonna be variable let's just copy paste this and this and what else do I need over here? I think that's it, right? Yes, this, 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 no. Volume type and volume size. So the type of this is string. We're going to put a default value, which will be the Ubuntu 18, you know, the, the usual, you know, what you usually use. Uh, if you wonder how do I get the AMIs, Remember, I, I, I went to EC2, and then I did the running instances, launch EC2, launch instance. Here, type down Ubuntu. You see 1804. You can copy the AMI, you know, the image ID. This is the default. I don't want my architects each time that they uh, deploy to insert the image ID. And just for, for reference, you can write down that this is Ubuntu 1804. And if the developer wants to insert uh, something else, they can, okay? Great. Variable, instance type, this is a string. The default also, I'm going to put it T3 micro, something very, very small. Great. Variable, keeper name. 
you don't have to put the type, it's just an old habit, okay? The default for the, the name, you should put, I, I create, I'm use, gonna use this file, this uh, keeper, but I don't think you, you create, if you did do it with me, so you shouldn't add the dash win, okay? That's the default for me. Variable. You know what? I'm going to remove it and I'll show you how I override it. Volume type. This is GP2. You can change it to IO1 or I don't know, whatever AWS has. And variable volume size. Um, type number, surprisingly. It's in gigabytes. And let's say the default is 8. Okay, so now I defined all of the variables, right? So here I referenced to these variables that are over here. The only thing that I didn't uh, declare a default value is the my IP address. Remember I told you about the tfvars file? So let's, let's see it. If I write down here terraform.tfvars and it should be hidden, right? Because we might put here some, um, you know, secret information like my IP address. I don't want any, uh, anyone in the world to see it. So this is my IP address, right? And my IP address equals this. I just want to show you what's going on. This name over here must be the same as this name over here, okay? So instead of inserting my, uh, each time that I do, Terraform apply, instead of inputting my IP address each time that I do that, I can just use the tfvars and it's going to automatically load this file and put all of the variables that are in this file. But you gotta make sure that the name here is the same as the name over here, okay? Great. Apply. Invalid literal my IP address, what have I done? Ah, okay. Uh, invalid literal, like, what is this? It's not a number, you know, there's no number like this because it should be a string, okay? So, my bad, apply. And then we'll go to EC2. Because I want to see how it's being created, right? So it's gonna, it wants to create one instance, you know, one EC2, yes, I'm going to allow it, go ahead, do it. You should always go through, you know, what's, what, what, what's gonna happen, but for now I'm just gonna, you know, you know what we're doing, okay? Instance is being created, amazing. Once this is done, and you can see the key, key pair name, right, is Terraform Meetup. This is not good because I'm using Terraform Win, okay? So if I want to override, and once, you know, once this is finished, or maybe even if it's not finished, I will have to um, destroy this instance and recreate it, but it's good because then you'll see what happens when you modify. So far, we only added stuff. We didn't destroy anything, okay? So if I want to, to um, upon running it, you know, to declare, a specific key, I can use the tfvars or use the var flag and just excuse me for a second, I'm not sure 100% because I don't usually do that, but yeah, dash var, okay? So I can use dash var and then I can do teraf, what's the name of the variable? Bastion, that's the name of the variable and it should be equal to terraform meetup uh, win, okay? Because this is what I'm using. So now let's apply this. Feel free to ask questions, you know, while, while this is happening, because it might take a minute. And you can see that it goes through all of my uh, TF state file, you know, it refreshes the code, it refreshes everything according to my TF, TF state file. And now it tells me, listen, and it makes sense, if you want to change the SSH key, you know, the key pair name to the EC2 instance, we must destroy your AWS instance bastion for that. Okay, I understand the risk, 
and I'm willing to do that. Okay, so it's gonna tell me this is gonna change, this is gonna change, this is gonna change. You know, it's gonna tell me what's gonna change. It's gonna add one and destroy one. Okay, because it's gonna replace. In some cases, like uh, maybe you know the security group, you might just change something. You know, you won't have to destroy. It. Okay, so let's do that. It's going to destroy this. Okay, I approved it, so it's going to destroy it. And instead of having Terraform Meetup, it's going to have uh, Terraform Meetup win. Okay, so this is shutting down, destroying, still destroying. Again, takes a minute or two. Right, yeah. Meanwhile, let's work on our outputs. Okay, let's work on our out. I want to print the public IP of the bastion after it's being created. Okay, after it's created, I want to print the public IP of the bastion. So I created a file name out, named output. It doesn't have to be, you know, all of the, the files, the TF files, are, file, are names that I'm choosing, okay? It doesn't have to be that this way. The only thing that matters is the, is the exten extension, right? Except from TF files, which starts with Terraform, you know? This is the only exception. If you want to load variables, do it with that or with auto, whatever. Once you get to that, you'll know. Okay, so output. If I want to get the output of the output, let's say bastion public IP. Why do I need that? Because if I want to SSH, I don't want to go to, to AWS cons console and then look at the public IP, right? It's annoying. We don't want to use the UI. I mean, what's the purpose? So I define output bastion uh, public IP and then the value of this output should be um, we called we need AWS instance we need the bastion you know right this you can think of it like you know here dot this dot whatever the reference uh, whatever reference that is available now let's see because I don't remember let's uh, let's see in the AWS instance how do I reference to a public IP Okay, so going back to the docs, AWS instance, maybe they have public IP. Yes, see, attribute reference, so I can reference to the public IP. So once the bastion is created, I want to print, okay, print, or maybe if I want to use this as a module, you know, I want someone to have, to, to have the ability to reference to my module and then use a public IP of the bastion, whatever, so I can do this. Let's apply again. Okay, applying it again. Also, I'm not gonna use, uh, okay, I'll just keep it like that. I won't change all the time. So now nothing is going to change, right? I didn't change anything. I just want to show you how I get the output. Okay, the output printed over here. So let's see. Refreshing state. And great, but now you see the outputs, right? You see. Bastion public IP is this. So let me prove you that it works, right? Now, because this just happened. SSH, I uh, use the Terraform win. Eh? Username for Ubuntu is Ubuntu and the IP. It's gonna tell me, do you wanna add it? Yes. Yay, we're in. Okay, so we've just created a Bastion. Now I need you to understand, I can take everything I've just written down over here and then set it up as a module. I will probably want to add more outputs, right? Because, you know, it, it, it's hard when you only have the, the public IP or you might also want to get some other stuff, but I can also uh, set it up as a module. So somebody else would say, I want to have a VPC and a bastion with it, you know? So I added another layer. I added to the VPC another uh, layer, which is the uh, bastion, right? So this works, we were able to SSH, and this was like the most important thing that I wanted to show you. Um, for the rest of you who wants to stay tuned and see the remote backend, I'm gonna do it right now, okay? I'm just, you know, stop, chill. I'm gonna even turn out my AC over here. Great. Any questions? Are you alive, guys? Is everything okay? Yes, questions.
Nothing. Are you alive? I can see people over here. We have a lot of folks over here, surprisingly. <laughs> okay, thank you, Chaim. Okay, so one comment is enough. Thank you. All right. So I'm just going to show you how we are going to use the remote backend. Now, Terraform is so, so smart, okay, that we did everything from here, except uh, we already did this, setting up a remote backend, right? So I'm just going to send you this here you can read about why uh, we should create a remote backend but we already talked about it so i'm just going to show you how hold on so instead of um creating things on my own you know again instead of doing it everything on my own i decided to google it you know terraform s3 backend and i was sure uh, I will find the proper backend for my needs, you know. So I will probably, yeah. I like Cloud Pose, I don't know. They, they have good Terraform modules. So after some Googling, I found this. It's a module which helps you create a backend. Okay, it's cool. Tac, tac, tac. Usage, blah, blah, blah. So we got the users over here. I'm not going to get into it too, too much. I'm just going to type here backend and i even got a file over here which is already opened this namespace let's call it my vpc the stage is right like the text that we did terraform state region eu west one of course the region can be um, as a variable, okay? So in case you wonder about the region, I don't really have to hard code it. I'm just doing it to do it quick and dirty and to finish it up. Okay, so this is the backend. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create the backend. When I say create, I mean it's going to create uh, an S3 bucket and a DynamoDB table. And I'm going to explain why. why. But first, let's do it, okay? Let's, whoa. Is it this one? Yeah. Na, 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 na. I don't know if you can see all of my lines. Now I see that, okay, like this. Hopefully you can see everything. All right. It's ugly, but I think you understand, right? Let's do clear. Okay. And then apply. Error. Why error? By the way, as you noted, I told you error before I got the error. Why? because I just added a module and I didn't do Terraform in it. Okay, so it's important to do Terraform in it before you apply stuff, right? Before you apply stuff, you know, after you add the module. Great. It's downloading the module. Na, 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 na. Okay, now I got everything on my computer and now I can apply it. So remember, after you import a module, you need to in it and then apply. Let's do this. Now it's going to create, it's because I read the docs, okay? It's not like I know it, okay? It's going to create an S3 bucket and a DynamoDB table because this is how the remote backend works with AWS. And this module is great because it's very, very easy to implement. Do you want to add three things? What does it want? It wants to create um, public access, okay, t Terraform state backend, yes. And what does it want to create? Uh, S3 bucket, and it wants to create a DynamoDB table. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, go ahead, do it. So a bucket policy, a bucket, and DynamoDB table. This is what I'm creating right now should be fast i think that if you want it to work for you you need to add or change the namespace because this is going to be the bucket name okay so in case i want to know the bucket name and i'll probably want to know the bucket name i can do it in the output okay i can just type down output backend s3 bucket name and i'll do the same for the dynamo db table backend 
db dynamo db table okay that's the table name and I need to reference remember to reference to the module to understand what was just created so in the outputs over here I need the dynamo db table ID or that's the, sorry dynamo db table name and the bucket name which here is the bucket ID it's a bit annoying okay so here it's gonna be value equals to module and then let's see how I named it terraform state backend dot um, dynamo db table name and here value let's just copy it blah blah I'm gonna get s3 bucket ID great doing apply again just to see that the outputs make sense okay I don't want to go to AWS console you can also do by the way you can also do this step you can do it manually you don't have to do it through Terraform you can create outside of Terraform a bucket and a DynamoDB table okay just in case you wonder uh, what I'm doing over here and I got the DynamoDB table name and the bucket name and reminding you that S3 bucket names are unique across all AWS regardless of your account so if you use the same name that I just used you know my VPC you might get an error so find an attractive name you know like uh, your name blah blah okay after I created the resources for using a backend you need to go to the main okay in the main remember I told you here declare the remote backend if needed so this happens here you know declaring the remote backend if needed how do you declare the remote backend right let's just put it over here let's start writing down you know the remote backend so backend and this is according to the docs okay so it's not like a, a according to the docs this is how you de declare a remote backend backend s3 dynamo db table equals to and then here unfortunately here you can't use variables okay or local variables or anything you must hard hard code it so dynamo db table great sorry it's a string and then bucket that's the bucket name great and here region which is also annoying because here you can't use a variable for the region I hate it and the key key is the file name so the file name that I'm going to use is terraform tf state which is like on my local machine right and encrypt equals to true this is recommended and I'm going to send you here why it's recommended to encrypt it okay because you, you might have sensitive data in your TF state so in case somebody hacks AWS it's encrypted right just in case you wonder why you should encrypt it and that's it after you declare okay so let's just go through the steps of the remote you create the resources for the remote backend via Terraform or manually I decided to go with uh, you know uh, with Terraform to create the resources once I get the resources, I need the DynamoDB table name and the S3 bucket name. Okay, I got those two. Now I need to add to my Terraform block in my main TF file. I need to add the backend S3 and, you know, paste the values over here. And after that, any guesses? Okay, so because we have a delay, I'm not going to wait for, uh, for an answer. But after that, if I do apply, okay, let's just do apply. Let's see what happens. Initialization required. Please see the error message above. Why is it saying that? Because it recognized that I also have a TF state file over here that is managed, you know, it's full, it has stuff in it, blah, blah, blah. And I also declared a backend for the S3. So now it wonders, so where is your backend? Is it locally or on a remote S3 bucket and DynamoDB table that we'll talk about it in a second. So now I need to do AWS Vault exec admin terraform init 
and now it's initializing, initializing. So it will ask me, do you want to transfer your local Terraform TF state to AWS? Yes, I do. Because you want to start from what you already have, right? You don't want to forget about it. You want to remember what you've just created. So yes, I want to transfer it. Okay, so it's going to ask me, um, pre-existing was found. Do you want to, co to transfer it? Yes, I do. Do you want to copy it? Okay. So it's copying, successfully configured the backend. Terraform will automatically blah, blah, blah. Great. Doing again apply. Now, I didn't change anything in the, in the infrastructure. Why am I doing this apply? To showing you how it's going to do with the thing with the um, acquire lock. Okay. So I'm doing this. It's going to acquire a lock. Okay. A lock key. Acquiring a state lock key from the DynamoDB table. And then it's going to do the changes it needs to do in the S3 bucket. Once this is done, it's going to remove the key from the DynamoDB table. This is why you have a DynamoDB table. And I'm going to even show you, and that's going to be the end of the webinar. I'm going to even show you DynamoDB. It's a NoSQL database in case you don't know. It's fully managed. You don't need to do anything. We have a table. This was created when we created the backend resources. You see, we got items and we got a digest, you know, we got something over here. And each time uh, I do the apply, I want to show you. So I do apply now. It does the acquiring um, the key. See, this is the lock key. Now it's, it locks. It says, listen, Mayor Gaba is now editing the files. So no one else can edit the files. So this is great because we're protecting the S3 bucket. And just like I showed you over here, uh, if I apply something to the infrastructure and Omer tries to do the same and the remote backend is, is on S3, Omer will get an error that he needs to wait for me to finish. Okay, there is also a possibility to override it with the force, you know, but of course you don't want to do that. And um, that's it. Okay, now just for the cleanup, you know, st stay tuned for the cleanup. I'm just going to do Terraform destroy. It's going to destroy everything and you'll see except from the S3 bucket. And meanwhile, I'm destroying, I'm reading Chaim's uh, question, how to manage infrastructure when not everything is part of the same project, all of your stuff. Do you put everything in one Terraform directory, multiple directory, how to manage states? Okay, so first of all, I will start the destroying. Okay, so Terraform, this is a big, big question. Terraform folder structure. Just to show you that, uh, no, it's not in modules. Code, no. I remember they have here structure. Isn't it creating modules when the standard, no. Yeah. This, okay. So first of all, I, I think Terraform refers to, uh, to an environment or a stage, you know, as a workspace. Okay, so in case you wonder what's a workspace in Terraform, it's an environment or a stage. So how do you work with multiple environments or multiple stages and how do you manage your, uh, your configuration? So usually I create modules, okay? I have a repository for modules only. And after I create those modules, I have my repository for the infrastructure itself, all right? And now it really depends on the project, but sometimes you will see, sometimes I will have main.dev.tf, sometimes I will have main.tf, and then uh, because of the variables, you know, it changes according to the, to the variables that you input, all right? I'm going to show you why, why we have this error message in one second. And usually I just put everything in, in the same repository, you know? So if I have the same application, same project, I put everything in the same repository and either I, I, I split it up to, um, to environment per file, like I just show you main.dev.tf, blah, blah, or, okay, or the other option is to play it with the branches. You know, so that's also something that I might do. Okay, so it, re it really depends on the project. If it's a big, big, big project, I might even have different repositories per, you know, per environment.
Okay, so it really depends on the project itself. So if it's a small project, I would put everything in the same repository and then play with the variables to know on which environment I'm going to. Okay, if it's a very big project, I would break it down to multiple um, uh, folders and you can also read on the code organization and repository structure over here, okay, which is great. Any other questions? <laughs> okay, so I got this weird error, right? Because I did destroy and we are trying to destroy also our remote backend because it was created as part of this infrastructure. So now I'll have to manually go to my AWS account. Blah, 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 here. I need to go to my AWS account. The S3 bucket that was created is a versioned bucket. So I need to go and delete all of the versions of the TF state. Hold on, TF state state bucket yeah it's this one i need to in the versions i need to click show select everything action delete deleting all of the objects over here this is a cleanup now so i don't care about what's happening i will copy the bucket name so i will be able to delete it blah 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 select it delete delete bucket name amazing that was the cleanup. I don't have the DynamoDB table anymore. I don't have the EC2 instances anymore. Okay, you see, tables are empty. EC2, VPC, all gone. If I want to bring it all up again, it's a click, click of a button, you know? It's a one-line code of apply, okay, which is amazing. Another question. You need, okay, so you don't need a different DynamoDB table, well, a DynamoDB table, yes. Yes, you do. I think, I'm not sure. I don't want to say something I'm not sure about. But you need to think of it as a TF state file per project, okay? It's not about the DynamoDB table and S3 bucket, okay? I would recommend either way to create an S3 bucket, the DynamoDB table per environment, because I don't like sharing resources across environments, you know? The only resources that I share across environments, if it's uh, dev and staging, you know? So sometimes they share the same NAT gateway or I don't know, whatever. But uh, basically you should create S3 bucket DynamoDB table per environment, okay? So they will have the TS state file in it. This is how I would do it. Any other questions before we're, we're done? Ta -ta -ta. Okay, so the recording will be available in the description of the same link. And I'm going to attach also a link to the presentation if you want to go through. And I will also add, I will push this repository to GitHub. And I will put a link to this repository in the YouTube description. So everything will be in the YouTube description. Okay, great. So thank you, everyone. Um, Hope it was clear, you know, what's Terraform, how to use it, why do you use it, and uh, that's it. Bye.